Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. So I will begin by going with the blurb, I suppose. Here is a small fact. You are going to die. 1939, Nazi Germany. The country is holding its breath. Death has never been busier. Liesel, a nine-year-old girl, is living with a foster family on Himmel Street. Her parents have been taken away to a concentration camp. Liesel steals books. This is her story and the story of the inhabitants of her street when the bombs begin to fall. Some important information. This novel is narrated by death. It's a small story about a girl, an accordionist, some fanatical Germans, a Jewish fistfighter, and quite a lot of thievery. Another thing you should know, death will visit the book thief three times. Okay, feelings about this. Well, I know that this is a lot of people's favorite book, and I apologize to those people, because I didn't really enjoy it. I thought it was okay. We'll start with the negatives, I guess. So the negatives were, I really didn't like Zuzak's writing style. Quite often he would write sentences in a way that I feel are wrong, but they're not technically wrong. They're just clunky. I thought it was very gimmicky bits of the layout. So for example, here we've got these little bits throughout where death or whatever basically summarizes what has just happened or what is about to happen. And it's very annoying. <laughs> It's very stop and starty, so you have here, like, you know, that's, that is a scene there, for example, and then we, you know, we have, like, four or five scenes over two pages or something, and every time that there's a break like that, it's a new scene, except even then, it's not, it doesn't need to be a new scene, I don't know why Zuzak's written it like that, it just, it really irritated me. Death, as the narrator, didn't work for me, I don't think it was fleshed out enough in terms of... It's never really explained death's powers or whatever, or how death works, with the result that sometimes he can see inside people's heads and sometimes he can't. To me, I think maybe that was just a mistake in the writing, that, like, this is the problem when you have a narrator like that, and it's narrated in the first person from time to time. You have people that suddenly can be like, oh, well, so-and-so is thinking this, and it's like, well, how do you know that? You, you aren't them. If you've got a third-person omniscient narrator, yeah, you can do that. Maybe death is meant to be omniscient, which is fine, but then there are things that he doesn't know, and so then it it just contrasts, like, it, it clashed with itself all the way through for me. So that was a big problem. I also think it was far too long, and a lot of it was kind of convoluted in ways that didn't need to be you know, it didn't need to be like that. I think I put in my review. I, I think it could have been sort of compacted, had maybe 200 pages removed from it, and then it would be a really good historical fiction novel. But it's just too full of a lot of the different gimmicks that it kind of relies on for me. So I feel as though the central plot I really liked, but it's as though there's this really nice central plot, and then it's just been diluted too much. You know when you've got, when you make squash, like with cordial, or I, I assume Americans are going to know what I'm talking about. British people know what I'm talking about anyway. I don't know, do Americans drink squash or is it just Diet Coke all the time? I don't, I don't know. But anyway, with cordial, I actually like my cordial really strong as well, so perhaps this is a pretty good metaphor. But the, the less of it you put in and the more you dilute it with water, the weaker it gets until it, in the end you just get this water that tastes like like wrong water if you know what I mean because there's not enough cordial in the water it's been diluted so heavily that it just tastes like water with something wrong with it it doesn't taste like the squash and that's what's happened here he's put not enough cordial in and too much water and so it's been diluted too much and it's a shame because this central story I did really enjoy now the day after I read this I watched the movie of it with Becca and this is really going to annoy people because I thought the movie was better. I really enjoyed the movie. For me, the movie was maybe, it was between a four and a four and a half stars for me. I think partly because in the movie, we don't know how old Liesel is. Like in the book, it specifically said she's nine years old at the start, which even by the end of the war makes her, what, 15. But most of this doesn't take place by that point. It's before then. And she just seemed too much of an adult for me, for her age. Whereas in the movie, I mean, she's clearly not nine years old. So so it kind of makes it more believable by the fact that the characters are a little bit older. I also found it easier to tell which character was which. Thing with the movie, right, what you've got to understand why I think the movie was better than the book is because 
by its very nature, the movie had to take out a lot of the problems I had with the book. You know, things like the line breaks between the different, you know, the different sections, for example, when it keeps starting these new scenes again and again and again when there's no need to. So that that doesn't really become a problem in the movie. The fact that it was narrated by death in the movie worked a lot better. Again, because you're not getting this head hopping. You're not getting to see what different characters think when you should or shouldn't be able to. And... Um, so I think by its very nature, the movie had to take, it had to improve upon a lot of these things that I saw as problems in the book. Oh, before I go any further, I should point out this is a buddy read as well. And I've forgotten who it's with because there are so many of us. Let me try and figure it out. This is actually the first of the buddy reads that have come about from my 10 books I want to buddy read video. Because before then I was planning on buddy reading Rebecca with sophisticated books. And a bunch of other people joined in, which is great. I read this uh, with Lou G. Shout out to Lou G. She got very excited last time I gave her a shout out. With Novel Crawler, whose channel is great. Her name is Jennifer. With uh, Cozy Reader Kelly. We have Night Fear, which is her name is Melissa. Mindy's Book Journey. And Kara as well from Wild Book Garden. So, yeah. Check out all of those channels. I think Lou G is the only one who doesn't have a channel. But she, she should do. She should do. Let's have a look. So we have some feedback here, actually. So from other the pe other, some of the other people who joined in. So we have Melissa from Night Fear. She said, I'm glad I'm not the only one that isn't digging the writing style. I love the movie and I'm hoping I end up enjoying it by the end. Cozy Reader Kelly, she said, Thank goodness I'm not alone. I'm having such a hard time getting into the story. It's been three days and I'm, and I'm only on page 100. I can't seem to read much in one sitting. I think it's the way the story is written. Feels more like short spurts than a narrative. Novel Crawler, she said, I agree. While I'm enjoying the story, the writing style doesn't have much fluidity. However, since this is a YA book, I feel like the stop and go motion is the quite normal in the genre. Some, peop some younger people supposedly have a shorter attention span. Now... I didn't realise this was YA going into it as well. Lou, Lou G, she said, I like the story a lot, but like most everyone else, the writing just didn't flow for me. There were a couple of times that I felt, I don't know, disconnected, but I was interested enough to want to know what happened next. So yeah, I think all of us had sort of similar issues with it. And I think, again, that's why I preferred the movie to the book, is because the story itself was great. <laughs> it's just the way it was executed in the book I didn't think worked as well. I don't want to make this video too long, but I'm going to check out some of these tabs, see what I did, tab out. Because you know me, I like to do a bit of reading. People seem to like my accent, I think, so they like it when I when I read stuff aloud. We have the bit, there's a bit right at the, right at the beginning where uh, Liesl's new father gets her gets her to roll his cigarettes for him because she likes doing it. And I'm like, she's nine years old. You shouldn't be encouraging a nine-year-old to roll cigarettes. Plus, for me, because I used to, I mean, I've quit now. I'm on about 58 days non-smoking, which is great. But um, I used to smoke roll-up cigarettes. And when I first started smoking roll-up cigarettes, it took me at least six months to learn that through a long process of trial and error that only really worked because I would then smoke them afterwards and I'd be like, well, this one's too tightly packed or whatever. I think it's interesting here as well. We have uh, Hans Jr. He, he catches Liesl reading a book that uh, that isn't Mein Kampf. And he says, uh, you're either for the Fuhrer or against him. And I can see that you're against him. You always have been. It's pathetic how a man can stand by and do nothing as a whole nation cleans out the garbage and makes itself great. And I do like that little bit of dialogue because it's kind of foreshadowing to then when they end up hiding a Jew in their basement, you know. So he doesn't stand by and do nothing while a whole nation cleans its garbage and makes itself great. He fights against the cleaners. Also, speaking of the fact that they hide the Jew in the basement, the movie did much better at building the scene when the Nazis come in and look in the basement for this family. Because in the book... Even when they come, they come in, we know that they're just checking it out to see whether it'd be suitable as a bomb shelter. And we also have at that point, I think Max is hidden upstairs in the bedroom under the bed or something. So there's less of a risk that they're going to discover him down there. Like the scene in the movie, they didn't know why the Nazis were inspecting the basements. And Max was there under a flag, like he was standing right next to him. So the movie did a much better job of building the tension there. Even then though... Even with all of that said, that's the only time at any point during the entire film 
that the Nazis come close to finding that they have a Jew in their basement. So my problem with like the whole story is it made it seem as though it's really easy to just keep a Jew. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it seemed too easy for them. And I get that that's because that isn't necessarily the point of the story or it's only one part of the story, but it just seemed too easy all the way through. One of the few small but noteworthy notes, one of these bits that's added in that I did enjoy, this is Death, and he says, I've seen so many young men over the years who think they're running at other men. They are not. They're running at me. Which I think is a great way of looking at war. It's accurate. We also have in the book here, like, bits like these, which are, it's meant to be the book that Max wrote for Liesel or whatever, but, oh, it annoys me. I don't know why stuff like that just annoys me. Again, I find it really gimmicky. I think it just relies too often on gimmicks. I'm not going to go any further into this. I did make some more notes. But as you can see, I mean, I'm halfway through here with my notes. I didn't note down that much that I wanted to talk about, especially in comparison to other books. I mean, I've, I've noted about as many points in this that I want to talk about, as in five go gluten-free. So, like, I don't know. I just feel as though... There wasn't enough substance to it. Like I say, it was that he'd making this cordial drink and he put too much water in. And that's a shame. It really is. But, um, yeah, I mean, in terms of where I would rank it, it's not my favourite war book. It's not my favourite Second World War book. It's not even my favourite Second World War book that involves somebody hiding a Jew. But it's, it's all right. I uh, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. I thought it was okay. I'm glad I've read it. I'm not going to read it again. Honestly, ha now that I've both read the book and watched the movie, I would say just read the movie. And, I mean, if you really love the movie, maybe then go back and read the book. But, yeah. Yeah, it was a bit of a letdown. It been a bit overhyped for me, I'm afraid. So there we have it. That's what I thought of The Book Thief. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought if you've read it. Big thanks to everyone who buddy read it with me as well. It was a blast and I'm glad that it kind of gave us all the, the, the impetus to actually go ahead and pick it up, I suppose. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more bookish videos and I'll see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.